In this micro nugget, we discuss how to use two or more wireless routers together. My name is James Conrad. All right, first of all, let's take a look at using multiple access points. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, let's take a look at an example here. Let's say you live in a very boring square house, <laughs> and uh, this is where you put your access point, okay? And you have to do that maybe because that's where the internet connection comes into the home, and that's where the home office is or something like that. But for whatever reason, it's emitting these wireless signals out of its antennas, and you're not really getting full coverage. You're only getting maybe this much of the house. So what could you do? You could s install a second access point, and I'm going to put it upside down just to indicate that I want to point the antennas to the direction that I want to get my reception, okay, my access. And now I'm going to be able to c fill in this area that I didn't have good reception in before. So if you have two or more access points, you do want them to use the same service set identifier, or SSID, even if you're using a hidden SSID. And uh, then without going into a lot of detail about that, hiding your SSID simply means that your neighbors will not be able to see it readily and potentially you know, freeload off of your signal and get free internet access. Although you should also set up a, a password, of course, on your access point and use the highest level of security you can, which at this point is Wi-Fi protected access to using the advanced encryption standard. Anyway, that's a bit out of a side of our scope, but we do want to use the same SSID if we have more than one of those in the same home. So if we just call this one my AP, and that's the SSID of it, we want this one to also be my AP. All right. Now, some people will also have a situation where they might have inherited one from their Uncle Joe, and then they bought, bought one from the electronics store, and they might not match up. So make sure that you have the same maker and standard, if at all possible. Uh, so if this one's a Linksys, make sure that this one's also a Linksys. If this one's a Netgear, make sure that this one's a Netgear, or a D-Link, or whatever maker it is. Also, do make sure that they follow the same standard, because there's 802.11a, b, g, or N, with N being the predominant one at the time being. And those can get up to 600 megabits per second with multiple antennas. So if you just buy them brand new off the store shelf, probably going to be 802.11N access points. Now then, here is the key thing with multiple access points. Very important that you do not use the same channel. Okay? Do not use the same channel. So you might look at this and say, well, I call this one the same SSID as this one. So it would make sense that I would put them on the same channel too, right? What's this thing about channels? Well, access points actually use channels, just like you have a CB radio or a citizen's band radio that uses a certain channel. Police's, police stations use certain channels. Uh, baby monitors use certain channels. Cordless phones and all, all these different things. Well, access points also use certain channels that are carved out by the FCC in an allowable range. And the channel just covers the frequencies that these will use in megahertz. Okay? So you don't want them to be on the same channel, though. So if this one's on channel 1, you would want this one not to be on channel 1. Okay? And why is that? Because if I'm here, let's say, in the living room in the middle on my laptop, then what's going to happen is if these are both identical access points, uh, SSIDs, and channel numbers, then it's going to be in contention where I'm going to connect to this one, but then just suddenly it's going to disconnect me and connect to this one. Why? Because these are going to be battling back and forth for the access to my laptop's Wi-Fi. So what you want to do is to make sure that you have at least five channels of separation. So instead of using channel one up here, for example, if I've already got the bottom one on channel one, maybe I'll put this one on channel six. And let me explain to you how that works out. This is Michael Gauthier's diagram for wireless networking in the developing world. And what we have here is the multiple channels that you can pick from in your UI. And if we take a look at, for example, my own access point here, uh, we'll see that when I do a wireless channel here, I can pick from one of these channels that you see here. Let me move this up a little bit because some of them are kind of falling off the bottom of the page there. Uh, but you can see it goes down from 1 down through 11, and that's what we have commonly in the United States. Uh, we can also specify whether or not we want our access point to be visible or invisible. This, if I choose invisible, that means I've hidden my SSID up here. Okay, So that gives you a little bit of an idea of what the interface looks like there. But when I choose 1, uh, the channel 1 on my first access point, if I were to choose even channel 2 on the second access point, which would seem to make logical sense, guess what I'm running into? Overlap. You see, channel 1 covers this spectrum, and channel 2 will cover this spectrum in the frequency. This means that we have some overlapping range here 
right in this area. And that's going to cause, again, that ping pong effect where I'm going to get bounced back and forth between those two access points. And we certainly don't want that. Even if I went out a little bit further, let's say I went to channel uh, four channels of separation. So one, two, three, four channels. If I make my second access point on channel five, look at the dotted line here. Notice that it still overlaps just a tiny little bit over channel one. So I'm going to occasionally still get a ping pong effect back and forth between those two access points. And that's why I'm going to really want to go at least five channels of separation out. Notice that there's a gap now between channel one and channel six where there's no overlap. And that's what's going to give me a successful uh, configuration of two or more access points because the channels don't overlap and contend with one another. So that's the main idea when you set up multiple access points. If I had a third access point, maybe in a small office building or a small office home office, then I would want to set the next one up on channel 11 and just make sure that you keep at least five channels of separation between those two home wireless routers. Well, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.